Okay, folks, uh, we're going to look at scatter plots in this video. It should be a little bit shorter. Um, we're going to take a look at how do we visually represent our correlational data uh, so we can demonstrate uh, the correlation. We're going to use graphs to plot values of the variables that we're comparing. And for example, let's say we're comparing AP psych test scores and the average number of hours studied each week. Do you think we would see a perfect correlation? Do you think we would see a positive correlation? Or do you think we see a negative correlation? You want to be able to answer that question and be able to explain why you came up with the answer that you did. So let's take a look quick at scatter plots. Um, notice we have the um, x-axis on the horizontal and the y on the vertical. And we typically would graph or plot the the variable we think has an impact um, on the y-axis. That might be, <coughs> excuse me, number of hours studied. And we would plot the x variable point, your AP score on the x-axis. Now, um, we probably wouldn't get a positive correlation. And here we see r equals 1.0 for perfect positive correlation. R represents the Pearson R coefficient correlation. That's the statistic number that we see when we look at correlation, so it's represented as R equals some number, positive or negative. Remember, that's between 1 and negative 1. Um, but we probably wouldn't see a perfect correlation between numbers of hours studied. So um, if we went up on the y-axis here, um, with number of hours studied, we probably wouldn't see a perfect increase in the score of the AP test here. But if we went over to this modest correlation, positive correlation here, um, we might see a Pearson R correlation of maybe a 0.5 or maybe even higher. And then we graph um, or we plot our number of hours studied here on the Y and your, ACT, your AP score here on the horizontal. And each one of these dots represents our um, plotting these two variable scores together. So we might have 10 or 20 hours in the middle. And if we went across here, we would see that we probably score about a 3 here. Now, how do we know it's not a perfect correlation? Because we we'd have to plot um, our best fit representation. And the farther those plots, those dots get away from the center, um, the weaker the correlation becomes. So you want to remember that the more closely they are aligned over here in the perfect correlation on that best fit line, the closer it is to um, positive or perfect correlation of one. Over here, you notice how the dots are more dispersed. Um, that means that we don't have a perfect correlation. Now for practice, you want to pause here. Can you think of an example of two variables with a perfect positive correlation? It doesn't happen very often in real life. So if you pause here and think about it for a minute or two, um, and then you can come back. Uh, welcome back. How about the number of friends who go to the movies with you and the amount of money you spend on tickets? That might be a perfect correlation for every person that goes up we would go over maybe $8 exactly. That might be a perfect correlation, but in reality, we don't see a lot of perfect correlations in real life. Can you think of two variables that sort of relate together in a positive direction? Maybe a, a moderate correlation of a 0.5 or 0.6. Take a moment to think of one of those and come back. How about the number of hours you studied and the score on your unit um, AP? A unit test in AP psychology. So during the week you studied an hour each night and an hour before the test, we might expect you get a higher score than somebody who only studied for an hour the night before the test. How about negative correlations? Here we kind of just see the opposite direction of that uh, slope line from left to right. Um, and we might have the same um, graphing rules as we do uh, in the previous example, you notice on the left, we have a Pearson R correlation coefficient of a perfect negative correlation. Remember, negative doesn't mean strength. It just means the direction that variables, as one goes up, um, the other goes down. So 
um, if we have a low number of hours studied, um, that doesn't fit in this example here. So we've got some different data going on here. Um, in the graph on the right, we might see a moderate negative correlation. And again, um, when we look at the best fit line, um, it's not, there's a lot of dots that are um, in dispersion away from that. So we don't have a perfect correlation there. So um, let's look at, it, at some examples. Um, can you think of a perfect negative correlation? This is a little bit harder. How about the number of miles that you drive, assuming a, a constant speed, and the amount of gas left in your car? So the more miles you drive, the less miles, the less amount of gas you have in your car. And maybe a, a moderate negative correlation might be the number of tweets that you create during the day and the amount of homework that you complete. Um, that might vary for different people, and it's not a perfect correlation. You might get more homework done after 10 tweets, and some days you get less homework done after 10 tweets. So you probably get less homework done, but it might not be a perfect correlation. Now, one thing to be concerned with here um, is something called an illusory correlation. That's when you, you perceive a correlation exists between two variables, but in reality it doesn't superstitions here as an example. Um, when you think there's a relationship between two variables and there isn't one. Um, and remember, if, from adolescent psych, uh, if you had that class, uh, unusual or unexpected events are likely to be more noticed and remembered. So, um, for example, let's say um, you tied your left shoe first and you hit all 10 of your free throws in a basketball game. You might think, well, gosh, the way I tie my shoes is related to the amount of free throws I make. In reality, it probably isn't if we put it to the test. Or from my childhood, I was told once if I spit on my worm, I'm going to catch more fish. Um, and maybe I did want I spit on my worm and I caught a lot of fish. Uh, that doesn't mean those two are related. It could just be an illusory correlation. I think a correlation exists when it really doesn't. So random sequences are sometimes seen as patterns or correlation when they're just actually random patterns. Now, what about no correlation? What do you think a scatter plot would look like if we compared the number of hours a college student studies for tests and the number of socks they have? Would we see a correlation there? Um, we might expect that no correlation exists. And what would that scatter plot look like? Um, we might see that as looking like this. We can't draw a best fit line in there. There is no slope. There's no pattern. So we probably have a Pearson R correlation, correlation coefficient of zero for those two variables. Uh, and that's the, the end. Remember, uh, recheck the objectives uh, from the first video on correlations. Uh, you want to know about the difference between positive and negative correlations, how would we represent those on a, a chart visually, and why we cannot conclude causation. So remember, use your notes, and be kind and rewind if you have to. Good luck.